a deserted highway. In normal times, traffic jams here stretch for kilometers. This is what the closing of the world's longest terrestrial border looks like. Only some essential workers and trucks carrying goods are allowed to go through. Authorities say this will go on for the next few weeks, maybe even months. Tourists or family members cannot cross the border, not even the thousands of Americans who are used to traveling here to buy more affordable medical treatment. They often come to Canada to buy things like Voltaren, an over-the-counter anti-inflammatory. For some of the clients of this pharmacy in La Colle, just 15 kilometers from the border, the closure has created irreversible damage. Families really do live on both sides of the border. We had a patient whose husband was in palliative care on the American side. She was stuck on the Canadian side without being able to visit him. He died without seeing her. Other indirect victims of the closure are dozens of Americans who suffer from diabetes. They're used to shopping for their insulin in Canada, where they stock up for months. I have American patients who call often to ask about insulin prices here. We've seen some who've become very, very thin. They avoid eating in order to save their insulin supply. It's very sad. According to the University of Florida, more than two million Americans try to save money by buying their drugs abroad. But with current travel restrictions, their situation is deteriorating. Ali Murata and Kevin Wren suffer from type 1 diabetes. They live near the border with Canada. Largely because of the border closure, but also because so many people lost their jobs and their health insurance, we're finding that there's a pretty significant increase in the amount of people needing insulin who don't have access to it right now in the United States. I've had calls from people in my state and the surrounding area who are rationing insulin. Without insulin, your body basically deteriorates within hours. Um, and that's when you'll see a lot of reports of what's called DKA, diabetic uh, ketoacidosis, um, and you eventually would die from that if you don't get insulin. So I just have to keep lobbying and going for change and um, you know, keep helping those that are rationing to find their insulin, just survive. In Canada, treatment can cost up to 15 times less than in the US. Online sales have exploded. Pharmacies like this one are sending products by mail but that can be risky. If there's a break in the cold chain, some drugs can become useless. Some American essential workers who are allowed to cross the border are even sneaking insulin back into the U.S. for those who can't make it. In Toronto, James Elliott and the T1 International Network have launched the Insulin for All hashtag. They are denouncing high insulin prices in America and authorities' lack of action. We warned before the crisis uh, that the situation of having a much larger country dependent on a much smaller country for its instant supply is untenable. Patients warned their politicians and their legislatures about it. And now this crisis has turned into a catastrophe. It's important to understand that insulin is made for three to six dollars a vial. Uh, it's a hundred year old drug that was created here in Toronto, Ontario, and the creators gave it away for free for the world. And yet here we are a hundred years later and people are worried about uh, border closure in the most powerful country in the history of the earth. And I think it's an untenable situation, I think it's a scandal, and I think the lawmakers need to act. Just like in France, Canada has a public health system with universal coverage and price control for drugs. Not the case in the US, where psychiatrist and pharmacologist Roger McIntyre lives and teaches part-time. Big pharma industry is not to blame. There's a system of health care in the United States where there are many middle people, intermediaries, known as the pharmacy benefits managers, who make a lot of money and provide no additional service to the system. If you're the best customer, you usually get the lowest price. If you go to your favorite restaurant all the time, the maitre d' will give you a, 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 treat you well and, and so on. But the Americans are paying the highest price and they're the best customers for the pharmaceutical industry and they are funding the world's medications. Under growing pressure from those who are sick since the border closed, some American states are now reimbursing treatment for certain diabetics. 
but dozens of drugs still remain inaccessible to the citizens of a first world economy. 